Agora TV. The world is thinking. How exactly would you write the regulation or legislation to solve this problem? Well, certainly you would regulate uh, the, the compensation of top management and boards of directors, um, where boards of directors are also important. Uh, director compensation in this industry is far from ideal. So you'd cap it at how much? No, you wouldn't cap it. You would regulate it. Uh, and you'd also regulate uh, the compensation of anybody who had the capacity to take major risks or cause major damage, uh, high-level traders who have high limits, things like that. Look, you know, when I started my software company, uh, it was funded by venture capitalists, and when they decided that they wanted to invest in the company, they sat me down and we had a little talk. And a little talk went like this, Charles, <laughs> your salary is going to be $100,000 a year. It's never going to go up. You will never receive a bonus. You will not have any outside income. Your stock will vest over five years. You cannot sell a single share of it, ever until the company is liquid. So, Charles, go out and make your stock worth something. Well, if we had compensation structures like that in the financial services industry, I think we'd have very different behavior. So, since you spent so much time on this, I, I want you to, to linger on this and, and drill a little more deeply. You don't want to mm -hmm. cap it, but you want to regulate it. So you want some regulator to write regs that would give, a, that would give guidance to, the, to a, a Goldman Sachs on how to structure a, a trader's compensation. Yes, yeah, more than guidance. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think that, that this is so important that this should be more than guidance. So what should it be like? Well, uh, uh, a very high fraction of their compensation should be uh, deferred for a significant period of time. The SEC regulations um, voted on today uh, defer 50% of compensation for three years. That is not enough. This bubble lasted six years, at least. Some people would say seven or eight. Um, and 50% isn't an impressive number either. Uh, so. Compensation should be deferred. A high fraction of compensation should be in some form that brings direct feedback with regard to the consequences of that person's decisions. Uh, some banks in Europe, for example, have begun compensating people with the same financial products that they create and sell. And uh, this yes, is the, this is the eating your own dog food form of compensation. Yes, uh -huh. and you know I think that it has a great deal to recommend it. Um, and, uh, and also where the compensation is in the form of stock, uh, it should be stock that you have to hold for a significant period of time, and if you do something wrong, it should be taken away from you. So in the case of your venture capitalists, the, the reason they had so much power over your compensation is that they owned the company. Metaphorically, they invested, they were the owners, they called the shots, they told you what to do. Your suggestion here is taking power away from the owners, who are the shareholders, and putting it in the hands of regulators. So I'm going to ask you a question that is, I'm trying, I'm meaning to be half serious and half devil's advocate with you. Hmm? Isn't this un-American? Isn't this anti-capitalist, what you're suggesting? Um, no. Uh, well, there, there, is, there is perhaps a sense in, in which it unfortunately is, but um, that is in its response to the extremely uncapitalist behavior of the people who have been running the financial services industry. If the people who ran the financial services industry behaved the same way as Silicon Valley venture capitalists, we wouldn't have these problems. But they don't. 